Okay, it's pretty windy, but me and Lee, we're going to do our uh, foraging video. And uh, instead of going in our woods, Lee had spotted some mullen. Well, mullen grows a lot of places around here wild. Uh, wild on the side of the road or beside fields and uh, he had spotted a new spot that we hadn't seen it at and he wanted me to come over and see it so we thought the wind is going to be awful bad but here's a couple of nice melons there's a little one too but here's a couple of really nice ones you can see the rosette of it you can see the fuzzy um, leaves and as opposed to uh, lamb's ear, it looks a lot like lamb's ear, but this has comes up in a rosette, they call it. These little leaves in the middle are pretty fluffy and, and soft, but as they get bigger, they're just kind of um, velvety, but not as soft. And lamb's ear is more like this middle here that's really soft and spongy and just uh, really soft and and fuzzy and uh, as the mullen gets a little bigger leaves it's just kind of uh, fuzzy but not quite as fuzzy and soft as the smaller ones there in the middle and then there's a little one here and this is on the side of a hill and I saw another one there's another one up in there a little further down this hill this one up there there's a nice big one up there so uh oh another one there's several through here another small one there i would probably try to come dig one up but every time that we have tried to dig one up and take it to our house um they they don't make it i don't know why but we just don't do good transplanting them Maybe we'll dig up one of the smaller ones and take home and try that and just keep an eye on these bigger ones to actually um, get some uh, mullen off of and uh, watch for the flowers. The flowers are wonderful too uh, to have off of these. So we will watch for those and maybe dig up that little bitty one there and try to take it home. So it was so windy that I couldn't get good video there. So I decided to do a little bit of voice over here and uh, just uh, tell you that I did go ahead and uh, pull a few of those outer big leaves off of there to bring home and go ahead and get some uh, drying uh, for tea and and uh, uh, things like that. Um, I will make a tea and an oil. And Lee likes to use it uh, to smoke it and use it that way when he has chest congestion. Uh, you can just use it as a dried tea or, um, like I said, Lee likes to smoke it. Um, so we will dry a little bit of it and I will explain more of that when I get home with it. So uh, there you go. That's what we're going to do uh, with that that we are taking home with us and we just got a little bit of it to take home for now okay that uh mullen is over just probably what two miles from the house about two two and a half about two two and a half miles from our house down the back roads and uh so um right up here is um, a spot where we had gotten it before now, with this little road, I really don't mind getting it kind of close to the road. I won't get it right beside the road, but this little road is not traveled enough to mind getting it kind of close to the road. It's not like getting it on a highway or anything. So I usually try not to get anything close to the road if it's a, a main road or something. But this little back road, I don't think it's going to hurt nothing because you can't drive very fast down this road anyway. Uh, not going to be a whole lot of, uh, you know, um, toxins and stuff from the cars and all that stuff that you get on a main road. So this little bitty road, I don't mind getting stuff pretty close to the road. And uh, that was a kind of a bank 
on the side of the road, but uh, not not real close to the road, but enough, you know, if it was a highway, I wouldn't have gotten it there. But um, this little road, it ain't gonna hurt nothing. <laughs> Unless they've sprayed, and I keep an eye on that, because occasionally um, up here, that's one thing, one problem, with where we usually get it at is that they have sprayed there a few times and uh, a, a couple of years they sprayed there. Not always, but we just keep an eye out. And you can tell when they've sprayed because when they spray, it will immediately, everything around there starts turning yellow, you know, and then dying. And so you can tell uh, when they've sprayed. We kind of keep an eye out on that. And uh, that's right up here. Anyway, this is a little back road, kind of uh, back behind our house on another little road that we uh, forage on sometimes. Here's a little spot up here. Sorry, it's so bumpy. Here's a little uh, wooded area up here that we for have foraged in. And um, there's mulling up in there, all kinds of stuff up in there. Mulling and um, two old tombstones. And, and two old tombstones <laughs> for whatever reason. But anyway, um, there is uh, all kinds of for good foraging up in that area, little wooded area close to our house. Two old kids from the 1800s. Uh, yeah, two tombstones that are uh, kids. They're both kids yeah, one was like five from one the 1800s. Was like so, yeah, up in that woods. Like we have been system. up in there and found that before. And one time the local lady that like, that cleans up cemeteries uh, cleaned that up at one point, but it's not cleaned up anymore. Anyway, right up here is where we usually get mullen. Um, so... Right through, starting right up in here, we usually see mullen. But like I said, they have sprayed that a time or two, uh, a couple of years, but then sometimes they don't. It's so been several years. It's been several years they since they have, everything. but we keep an eye out on that, make sure they... Um, and if I cut it and come by here a couple of days later and it's dying, yeah, yeah. I'll throw it away. Yeah. Yeah, we have to keep an eye out on this spot in case they do spray it. I don't know why they sprayed it those few years, because they usually don't. There's one right there. Uh, did you find one? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't have as much of it growing as it used to here. But maybe we have found another spot if we can get some. <clears throat> there, there's one. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It's usually all up and down through there. Um, but yeah, we have to keep an eye out on other spots and we'd really like to get some growing on our property, but boy, we've had a hard time at that. We even planted some seeds. We even got some seeds and planted them one time at the house and they didn't do any good. We got good soil. Uh, we have good, yeah, we, our soil is too good. Mullen likes bad soil. Mullen likes dry, poor soil, and it uh, actually helps the soil. And so, anyway, I don't see much. No, I don't see much, but um, anyway, there you go. Maybe more so, out soon. so this is the little road close to our house, like the next road over. And uh, we go over here and forage around in the little woods over here sometimes. And and uh, and then on the other side of the road is farmland. Miles and miles and acres of farmland all out through that side. So there you go. Now we're headed home with what little bit of mullen we did go ahead and and pick but we'll be back to that spot soon okay so i got this little bit of mullen home that i went ahead and picked and um, i'm just washing it up a little bit because it was really dusty 
uh, because of uh, these back country back roads, it gets very dusty. So I'm washing that off, and then I'm going to hang them to dry. And uh, I will hang them out on my screened-in porch and turn on the ceiling fan out there and let those dry out there. Now, I do have a dehydrator, and if I was in a hurry for these, I would go ahead and dehydrate them on uh, 95. You don't want them, uh, you don't want things getting too hot. Herbs and things usually don't need to get too hot. Uh, it can destroy some of the, um, uh, some of the uh, health benefits. Um, now, I'm not sure that applies with mullein since you can smoke it. <laughs> you can smoke it and get health benefits. So, um, you know, but just as a general rule of thumb, I try to dehydrate herbs on a, a low heat, uh, 95 in my dehydrator, or hang them up which is what I used to do. I used to hang them up all the time. I didn't have a dehydrator and I always hung them out on my porch or um, I had a drying rack or uh, just hang them out there and, uh, and let the sun you know, do its job or the wind or uh, in this case, I have a ceiling fan on my screened in porch. So I'm gonna do that. And I'm not in a hurry for it because it's really good for uh, colds and things, and I probably won't use it until the fall. Uh, so I've got plenty of time to gather more also. But I do want to make an oil with this uh, for earaches and things. So I'm going to uh, dry this and go ahead and use it for an oil, um, in an oil to uh, uh, do that. So that's what I'm going to do with this little bit that I've pulled today. And like I said, we will keep an eye on those plants and get some more later. Uh, we did not dig up that small one. We may go back and get that later. Um, and I'll be watching for flowers. So um, mullein is um, so good for any chest, uh, chest conditions, chest, uh, bronchitis and chest colds, any kind of cold or infection that gets in your lungs and your, you know, um, mullein is great for those things. Also good for allergies and um, <clears throat> all the bronchitis, earaches, sore throat, um, tonsillitis even. The Native Americans used it for all kinds of issues and uh, they used it also for um, uh, tonsillitis and, um, you know, throat, throat issues and chest issues, lung issues. Um, also, I read that, um, you know, and we have used it, me and Lee have used it uh, for any chest congestion is what we have used it for. Lee has smoked it several times for chest congestion and when he had COVID, and uh, I used a tea. I might I drank the tea when I had COVID and uh, other other issues. I have also used uh, mullein oil and garlic together in an oil to make a an earache medicine, a earache oil. And you just put a couple of drops in each ear a um, couple times a day if you've got a really bad earache. Um, <clears throat> so that's the things we've used it for. I have mostly used it as a tea and felt like it really broke up that chest congestion. So, uh, that's our suggestions for it. I don't really have much allergies. Lee does, but he had rather smoke it and, uh, than drink tea. <laughs> so there you go. I hung them in threes. Uh, out on my drying rack on my porch and um, so I will turn the fan on them and uh, let those get dry out here and that is an <clears throat> that is an old clothes drying rack that I found at a yard sale years ago and it is an antique one but you can 
Now, if you can see that, it is an antique one. It's old. But you can get those still at Walmart or wherever you can get those uh, drying racks new. And I actually use it for clothes, too, if my dryer's down or... Um, I like to uh, hang my clothes out on the line, but if it's raining or something and I just have a little bit that I can put on here and dry, I will do that and dry herbs on it. So you can get those, like I said, at Walmart or somewhere, but this is an antique one. You see there? So there you go. So give us a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe.